morning everybody uh, we're continuing our christ central devotional on esther in fact today we're going to finish the book of esther so chapter 10 has three verses so i want to pray and then i'll read the verses father god thank you that we can come in your presence day after day Thank you that you're with us. And Lord, as we look back at Esther, I pray that you would show us what you want to teach us each today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, my name is so Mark Putney signs up. So, my name's Heather. And yeah, we're going to finish the book of Esther. So, I'm going to read from the message. I'm gonna try not to do a sermon. Last week I spoke for rather a long time, so sorry about that. I'll try and keep it briefer today. So Esther chapter 10. King Xerxes imposed taxes from one end of his empire to the other. For the rest of it, King Xerxes extensive accomplishments along with the detailed account of the brilliance of Mordecai whom the king had promoted that's all written in the chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia. Mordecai the Jew ranked second in command to King Xerxes he was popular among the Jews and greatly respected by them. He worked hard for the good of his people. He cared for the peace and prosperity of his race. So we've looked back a number of times at the book of Esther and the story. Fiona recapped on Monday and then Ruth reminded us yesterday to remember so while I'm speaking I like you to think back through the book of Esther what God has been teaching you and then when we're in groups later we can perhaps share a little of how God has spoken to us and as we look back and remember what particular highlights of of the story of Esther have helped us in our lives so just a really really brief resuming of the story so king king xerxes had a banquet he was showing off all his riches of his kingdom and then at the end of six months he had a banquet and that after a lot of eating and drinking, he called King, uh, his wife, Queen Vashti, and wanted to show her off to all the people. But Queen Vashti refused, and the king was furious, and so it ended up with looking for a new queen. Now, Esther, who the book's named after, was eventually chosen as the replacement queen. Esther's cousin Mordecai and Esther were both Jews. They were exiles in, in Persia. And so, but Haman was the evil one in the story. And he was the king's highest official. And he'd been honored by the king and was in a very important position. And he was furious when Mordecai would not recognize and bow down to him. So Haman was furious with Mordecai, but decided not to just destroy Mordecai. He found out that Mordecai was a Jew. So Haman hated all the Jews and decided to destroy all the Jews. And he made a plan and got the king's backing. So later in the story, Esther, being in the position of queen, was asked to risk her life and she pleaded with the king for her people, the Jews. And Haman 
was exposed as evil, his evil plan before the king, and he ends up being hanged on the gallows that he prepared for Mordecai. And Mordecai was recognized as an honorable man, and he was given a position of authority, in fact, the position that Haman has had. And then finally, we saw yeah, uh, two days ago that the king revoked the edict of the Jewish massacre and the festival, the celebration of Purim was put in place and as a remembrance of the national deliverance. So we see in today's passage that Mordecai was a popular and respected man. He worked hard for the good of his people, the Jews, and he cared for their peace and prosperity. So throughout the book of Esther, we see God's plan for his people, how God used Esther and Mordecai in his plan. Things look really bad, really bleak, Esther and Mordecai has arrived in the country as foreigners, as exiles. They had no position, no power, but they trusted God and they lived honourable lives. They spoke out when they needed to and were brave and they were not compromising. So we can learn a lot from this. We can often be in difficult circumstances and we need to trust God. Even though we may feel powerless, we often cannot do things, but we can live our lives as honourable. We can trust God and live the way he wants us to. And we need to remember Right in this circumstance now with the pandemic, God is sovereign. He is in control. So we heard on Sunday from Trisha about being foreigners in the land. So and we were reminded as people of God, we are foreigners here on this earth. Our true home is in heaven. And we're just passing through. So we're like the exiles, foreigners. So Jeremiah uh, has a message for God for the foreigners in Babylon. They were exiles. And so back in Jeremiah 29, it's a really well-known chapter. I would encourage you to read it. And God... Uh, tells the people, the exiles, the Jewish exiles, that they should settle down in the land, they should build houses, and they should make that their home for that 70 years they're going to be there. But God promises them that he will bring them back. And then this very well-known verse, Verse tw uh, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And we need to remember that that was spoken many uh, centuries ago to the exiles in Babylon, but God's word is alive and active. So although it was spoken very long ago, God has not changed. He's still the same. He still cares for us. He still has a plan for us. So we need to trust his plan and trust his protection. And we need to remember what God has done. Fiona was sharing a bit of what God had done in her life on Monday. And yesterday, Ruth was reminding us to look back 
and see what God has done. So as we go into groups, maybe we can share a bit of what God has done in our lives. And particularly if we can think of things that we've learned from the book of Esther. And yeah, so we'll split into groups now. Thank you.